Good morning, everybody, and welcome to our service this morning. Um, on this day, we're back in Romans again this week. So uh, let's uh, let's begin. We're going to hand over to Cheryl, and she will take us get us started here. So we begin with the sentence of the day. Thus says the Lord: Maintain justice and do what is right, for soon my salvation will come and my deliverance be revealed. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, God, to to whom whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and and from whom no secrets secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. Jesus said, This is the great and first commandment, and the second is like it. You shall love your neighbour as yourself. And top of the next page, let's say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace that we may always thankfully receive the benefits of his sacrifice and also daily endeavour to follow the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now we have our readings. Our first reading is taken from Genesis chapter 45 verses 1 to 15. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants, and he cried out, Have everyone leave my presence? So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him and the Pharaoh's household heard about it. Joseph said to his brothers, I'm Joseph, sir. Is my father still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come close to me. When they had done so, he said, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save lives that God sent me ahead of you. For two years now, there has been famine in the land, and for the next five years there will be there will not be ploughing and reaping. But God sent me ahead of you to preserve for you a remnant on earth, and to save your lives by a great deliverance. So then it was not you who sent me here, but God. He made me father to Pharaoh, lord of his entire household, and ruler of all Egypt. Now hurry back to my father and say to him, This is what your son Joseph says. God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, don't delay. You shall live in the region of Goshen and be near me, you, your children and grandchildren, your flocks and herds and all you have. I will provide for you there because five years of famine are still to come. Otherwise... You and your household and all who belong to you will become destitute. 
You can see for yourselves, and so can my brother Benjamin, that it is really I who am speaking to you. Tell my father about all the honour accorded me in Egypt and about everything you have seen, and bring my father down here quickly. He threw his arms around his brother Benjamin and wept, and Benjamin embraced him, weeping. And he kissed all his brothers and wept over them. Afterward, his brothers talked with him. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. The psalm is Psalm 133, and it's found on page 365. I'm wondering, David, if we should just read this all together, because it's only a few verses, sure, so sure. we could okay. all do it together, could we not? Yes, yeah, fine. Okay. Yep. Behold, Behold how, how good and how, how lovely it is when families live together in unity. It is fragrant as oil upon the head that runs down over the beard, fragrant as oil upon the head of Aaron, bit barren, that ran down over the collar of his robe. It is like a dew of Hermon, like the dew that falls upon the hill of Zion. For well, there the Lord has commanded this blessing, which is life forevermore. Our second reading is taken from Romans chapter 11, verses 13 to 32. I am talking to you, Gentiles. Inasmuch as I am the apostle to the Gentiles, I make much of my ministry in the hope that I may arouse my own people to envy and save some of them. For if their rejection is the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance be but life from the dead? If the part of the dough offered as first fruits is holy, then the whole batch is holy. If the root is holy, so are its branches. If some of the branches have been broken off, and you, though a wild olive shoot, have been grafted in among the others, and now share in the nourishing sap from the olive root, do not boast over those branches. If you do, consider this. You do not support the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, Branches were broken off so that I could be grafted in. Granted. But if they were broken off because of unbelief, and you stand in faith, do not be arrogant, <coughs> be afraid. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Consider therefore the kindness and sternness of God, sternness to those who fell, but kindness to you, provided that you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And if you do not persist in unbelief, they will be grafted in, for God is able to graft them in again. After all, if you were cut out of an olive tree that is wild by nature, and contrary to nature were grafted into a cultivated olive tree, how much more readily will these, the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree? I do not want you to be ignorant of this mystery, brothers, so that you may not be conceited. Israel excuse me, has experienced a hardening in part until the full number of the Gentiles has come in. And so all Israel will be saved, as it is written, the Deliverer will come from Zion. He will turn godlessness away from Jacob. And this is my covenant with them when I take away their sins. For as far as the gospel is concerned, they are enemies on your account. But as far as election is concerned, they are loved on account of the patriarchs. For God's gifts and his call are irre irrevocable. Just as you who were at one time disobedient to God have now received mercy as a result of their disobedience. 
so they too have now become disobedient in order that they too may now receive mercy as a result of God's mercy to you. For the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. The Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew, chapter 15, beginning at the 21st verse. Glory, Glory to you, Lord, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. <clears throat> Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. <clears throat> she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. For the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, you Lord, Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Uh, Lord, as we gather together this morning as your people, we ask that you would be with us, that you would sanctify us by your word and your spirit. Lord, and that you would, by your grace, help us Lord, in the days ahead to persevere with all that's going on in this world, with our lives, uh, our struggles. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, as I um, said, we're back into Romans uh, this morning. And uh, as usual, we uh, sometimes feel like we have to tiptoe through Paul. Uh, it's not an easy uh, passage, this one. And Paul is sometimes not easy to understand. However, we give it a go, led by the Spirit, we hope. Amongst those who were instrumental uh, in my coming to faith years ago were a couple of guys who both suffered from mental illness. Uh, I, at the time, I think it was bi uh, bipolar disorder, if I remember correctly. They never gave up on me. They cajoled, they hustled, uh, but they kept at it all out of love. They were, in the, in the end, they were a gift from God. And I felt forever grateful for those two guys for doing that. I remember, um, I remember them a, quite a few times as I was preparing for today, as I was reading this passage, Preparing this sermon. They were like Paul who was grieving over his people, his ethnic brothers and sisters, Israel and the flesh, desperately wanting them to come to the Lord to know Jesus, never considering for a moment giving up on them. In fact, he wants to make them jealous, he says here, as he goes to the Gentiles. And it, but in our passage, Paul wants to make it clear as clear as possible to the Gentiles that even though ethnic Israel has fallen out with God because of their unbelief, God still loves the people of Israel and hasn't given up on them and never will give up on them. The Christian Gentiles in Rome, it seems, have become a little bit cocky about having come to faith, about their faith lording it over the Jews who were at the time of writing a minority in Rome. The Jews had earlier been exiled from Rome by Claudius, uh, but he had since died and they had returned. But things, uh, things hadn't been going well. The, the Gentiles, if you like, had been in charge and things weren't now going for, well for the Jews as they come back. And the Gentiles are doing a little bit of gloating here. Away with circumcision, away with the Torah might have been their catch cry. 
So the divisions were running here along ethnic lines, more or less. Something that Paul was feeling very keen to jump on. Since God was not giving up on the Jews, the Christian Gentiles really ought to be embracing them and showing them love, loving them. That is, that is the point at its most basic level here, but there are nuances through this passage that we need to look out for uh, and uh, have very good lessons for the church today. which in many ways is divided at, uh, today as well. Gentile boasting is crushed immediately by Paul because this issue cuts both ways for both ethnic groups. What has happened to ethnic Israel, Paul says, can also happen to the Gentiles. Rather than boast over Israel, Paul's point is that Gentiles should be looking at unbelieving and uh, uh, Israel and saying, there but for the grace of God go I. Or as Mike Bird points out, they could respond to this situation by reaching out and testifying to uh, unbelieving Israel, we benefit from the spiritual, spiritual nourishment that was yours and can still be yours. Paul uses metaphorical language, as Paul does, often about bread and botany to un unpack his case. It's good to uh, just identify some of these metaphorical uh, images here. The natural branches, think of that as ethnic Israel. The wild olive shoots, the Christian Gentiles. The root of the olive tree as the patriarchs of the promise, Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. The first fruits of the remnant, uh, the first fruits are the remnant of Jewish Christians who have been saved by grace, including Paul himself. You see, you, you know, you've got the patriarchs here. You have to know your history here uh, to understand this passage. Paul begins by saying something quite significant here. Once the first fruits of the dough, that is the remnant Jewish Christians, have been offered to God, the whole batch, he says, is considered holy. Paul is saying here that Israel is not out of God's view. Paul is expressing his confidence that the blessings that Israel has already received, and we read that through the Old Testament, has already received will be even greater blessing, there will be even greater blessing in the future. In the case of the olive tree metaphor, if the root, that is the patriarchs, if the root is holy, then so are the extended branches, the natural branches. The patriarchs belong to ethnic Israel and as, as, one, of, uh, as one of Israel's greatest privileges. The patriarchs are the basis for God's love for Israel. He said, I will do, I will love Israel. Indeed, remember that the Messiah went to and served the Jews first in the Gospels. In this way, confirming the promises made to the patriarchs. As we read in Romans 15, 8. For I tell you that Christ has become a servant of the circumcised on behalf of, of the truth of God in order that he might confirm the promises given to the patriarchs. God has not forgotten Israel. And if God has not forgotten Israel, you Gentiles shouldn't be looking down on them at all. Well, that's the first, uh, the first couple of things we say here. That uh, God loves Israel and, they, and the root of all that's happened uh, in faith comes from Israel, from the patriarchs. So the Gentiles need to be on board with God here and reach out to the Jews in love as God does himself. The second thing is this. As Paul points out, some of the natural branches have been broken off and you, you, the wild olive shoot, have been grafted in and now share in the nourishment from the root, the patriarchs. You, you, 
And so you can hardly consider yourself to be superior. The principle of the gospel that has underlined all of this all along is that boasting is excluded for everybody save boasting in the glory of God, chapter 5 to 11. Nobody, least of all the Gentiles, can indulge themselves in ethnic bigotry here. The basis for this injunction is here. You do not support the root. The root supports you. Christian Gentiles stand on the patriarchal promises for Israel, not vice versa. And most importantly, and this is how sometimes we can think, this is not a some kind of replacement theology, which is how some people have thought of this, with the, the Gentile church supposedly replacing Israel once and for all. That's not what is going on here. The determining issue here is faith, which is a gift from God that we are all called to uh, accept and, and exercise. Well, then, says this imaginary, to, uh, imaginary Gentile interlocutor wanting to justify himself, with the branches broken off so that I might be grafted in. And Paul says, okay, I'll give you that, granted. But the branches were cut off because of unbelief. But you're only standing where you are because of the gift of, of faith given by God, by the grace of God. That should cause you, your, your proper response to that is to stand in awe of God, not gloat over Israel. That's not how faith operates. In any case, if God did not spare the natural branches, then he very well may not spare the wild shoots grafted in. God's severity or sternness towards Israel is because of their unbelief, but his kindness is toward you because you stand in faith. So continue in that faith so that you can continue in the kindness of God and don't yourselves and, and you don't yourselves incur his sternness. Now this raises a question. As you read Paul, and it always raises questions. <laughs> it does. We may have noticed the question, an important question. How does the serious warning against falling away square with the promise of assurance in chapter 8, verses 18 to 39, that nothing will separate us from the love of God? That's, that's a, a very good question, that is. Howard Marshall embraces the tension by concluding that side by side with the stress of, on divine initiative in election and salvation, there is a warning to show awe in the sight of God lest anyone should be cut off for failing to continue in his kindness. And I think at the very least that we can, we can say here is Paul is arguing that true saving faith is persevering faith. That's one of the characteristics of saving faith, is that it perseveres. Deepen your faith by staying connected to God through prayer, his word, and fellowshipping with his people. And since faith is fundamental, God is able to graft Israel in again. Israel can be saved if they come to a position of faith in Christ. And some have. We know there is this remnant that has. Paul tells us this. Paul argues, in fact he was one himself. Paul argues this with a very useful rhetorical device in verse 24 where he moves from the harder to the easier. Uh, Paul was a great rhetorician in this way. If God were able to bring in his covenant people, people, people like you who are pagans, idol worshippers and sexually immoral, if God could do that, how much more could he incorporate those who already possess an adoption as sons and daughters who possess the covenants, the law, the patriarchs and the promises? In verses, uh, we won't spend a, a lot of time on verses 25 to 32, but th there's a complex argument here which is best summarised, I think, in this way. Paul says Israel ha Israel's heart has, has hardened until the full number of Gentiles has come in. 
just as the hardening, remember earlier, just as the hardening of Pharaoh's heart was used by God to make his name known amongst the nations as he liberated his people from slavery in Egypt, so God is using the hardening of the hearts of Israel to reach the Gentiles and bring them in. The view that God intentionally hardens people's hearts, particularly Israel's, to bring about his purposes, doesn't add up with the full context of Scripture. God desires that none be lost and desires that all come to him. Indeed, as Paul notes in verse 32, God imprisoned all people. God did this by calling out the sin of humankind. And that immediately means that they are imprisoned in sin. But he does that, he calls it out, and he puts them in that position so that then when he, they turn to him, he can show them mercy. For God imprisoned all in disobedience so that he may be merciful to all, Paul writes. Even though God had been grieved over our sin, our idolatry, his love for us has always been greater. And he sent his son through whom his, uh, and, through, and through whom his death and resurrection and together with the Spirit, he draws us back to God so that we can receive mercy from God. That is there available for every human being, whether Jew or Gentile, male or female, whatever colour or race. So what, what can we do this? How might we think of this for today? How would this help us today? I think the first thing we need to note here regards denominational differences and the, the potential splits in the church. Denom denominational differences should never be a reason for anyone thinking in any way uh, that they are superior, or nor should it create serious conflict. I recall one of my lecturers, a devoted Anglican, who was teaching on the subject of worship, told his class that there are different forms of worship, different kinds of Christian music even. We may have our preferences. Some people raise their hands, some dance in the aisles. Some are less demonstrative, although that doesn't mean that they are any less passionate about their faith. Denominational differences, differences in views about end times and so on, should never lead to dysfunctional conflict. In fact, one of the people who led me to the Lord at a seminar was a guy who was really serious on end time stuff. I had no idea what he was talking about. But what attracted me to, uh, to the faith was his passion, passion for God, for Christ. So all these things are simply not central to our faith. Our trust in God, our worship of God, our love for God with whole heart, mind, soul and strength and our love for our neighbour, Jesus himself says, they are central in all of this. And finally, since faith is fundamental to our spiritual walk, it is important that we pray for those, for the world, for those who don't have faith. Especially, and I think, especially these days, those people who've walked away from the church because they have experienced abuse in the church. True faith never takes a posture of superiority. That's not a characteristic of faith. The church is supposed to be a light to the world. And as Gentiles, we are grateful, really, that we are grateful for the gospel that has come to us through Israel. And we hope that one day they will know and come to have faith in Christ. Loving our neighbour and praying that all will come to faith is imperative. And so we avoid making assumptions and passing judgments when we come across people who might be different from us. Instead, let us be led by the Spirit of God. If the Spirit leads us to greet people, let's do that. If the Spirit leads us to pray for them, then we should do that. 
Whatever we do, we avoid boasting at all costs. We give up any sense that we may be superior and we walk humbly with the Lord each day. Let's pray. Father, we are grateful. Uh, we're just so grateful that Paul, um, that you chose Paul to write these letters to, to challenge us, really. Um, we're thankful for that. And help us, Lord, as we read in Scripture, um, to walk humbly with the Lord, before the Lord. And let's be servants. Help us to have servant hearts. And help us to embrace the wonderful tapestry of our faith. These, uh, all these different ways of worship, different music, different singing. Uh, and in, in that find unity, the unity that you, you give us. So Lord, by your grace, may we walk each day with you, we pray in Jesus' name. Let's, uh, we're on page 123, and let's affirm together the faith of the church. We, we believe in one God, the Father, the, Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead, and, and the life of the, of the world, world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the world and for the church. Loving God, as you once heard the pleas of a Canaanite woman for her daughter, hear our prayers for the well-being of your world and your church. We praise you, O God, that you are the God of all nations. We bring to you our prayers for all the peoples of the world. We pray for all leaders of the nations, our Prime Minister here in Australia, the government, the government of New Zealand, the government of governments in Europe, the governments in America, in Canada, and around the world. We pray for the leaders of the nations, for all with political and legal responsibilities. We pray especially for your people who are pushed to the edges of society by political oppression, economic injustice, or by discrimination because of race, gender, or creed. We pray for the indigenous people of this country and others who are outsiders in, our, in their own lands. Shake our prejudice and complacency and teach us a faith that is fearless to confront injustice. Loving God, in your mercy, hear yeah, our, our prayer. prayer. We praise you, O oh God, that your church is a house of prayer for every nation. We bring to you our prayers for all who confess your name. We pray for all leaders of churches, the World Council of Churches, the National Council of Churches, and all ecumenical bodies. We pray for the church in hostile and dangerous places and for all who minister here in your name. And we bring to you in particular our Archbishop and our Bishop Paul and all 
uh, and all bishops in our diocese. We pray especially for those who are not welcome to eat at your table, for those excluded from priestly ministry, for all who are condemned for unorthodox belief. Shake our certainties and security shake our certainties and our securities and teach us a faith that is open to receive new understanding. Loving God, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We praise you, O God, that you turn away none who call on you for help. We bring to you our prayers for all who are in need. We pray for the sick and the sorrowing and for those who care for them. And we bring you, particularly this morning, Carol as she recovers from surgery uh, on Friday. Be with her, we pray, Lord, and may she have a speedy recovery. We bring to you the whole family as they prepare to honour uh, the loss of Elizabeth uh, on Tuesday. Be with them, and especially Bill, Lord, as he grieves the loss of his wife of many decades. We bring you Abby and Sandra as she recovers and Bev, Levi and Keiko and all who are on our hearts. We pray especially for all who are marginalised by disability or disease, by the COVID-19 virus, for those with mental illnesses, for the elderly and particularly those in aged care who are, uh, who are suffering at the moment from COVID-19 and those shut away in institutions. Shake our indifference and neglect and teach us a faith that is compassionate to plead the cause of those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear yeah. our prayer. We praise you, O oh God, that you are a God of mercy, that you welcome home your children of every creed and nation, we give you thanks for your faithful people of every generation. Teach us a faith that is intelligent, persistent and bold. That perseveres. That as you once commended the faith of a Canaanite woman and judged her worthy, we too may be found acceptable in your eyes and with all your people and come to dwell forever in your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus said, Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Let us pray. We do not presume to come to your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord, whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. God is steadfast in love and infinite in mercy, welcoming sinners and inviting them to the Lord's table. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, confident in God's forgiveness. Merciful, Merciful God, God, our Maker and our Judge, judge we have sinned against you in thought, word and deed and in what we have failed to do. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. We repent and are sorry for all our sins. Father, forgive us. 
strengthen us to love and obey you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, who has promised forgiveness to all who turn to him in faith, pardon you and set you free from all your sins, strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We are the body of Christ. His spirit is with us. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please greet one another. Peace be with you, Jenny. Peace be with you, Brian, Sylvia, Peace, Jim, Ty, Ray, Peace with you, Brian, Peace with you, Ian and Lorraine, Trish, be with you all, Trish, be with you all, Peace be with you all, and peace to everybody on YouTube. Yeah, peace with you all. Thank you. Morning. Everybody. God bless you. God bless, God bless you. you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Okay. And now we give thanks for um, the gifts of finances that you've given to us, Lord, and that we offer to you. <coughs> Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through these goodness we have these gifts to share. Accept and use our offerings for your glory and for the service of your kingdom. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. And we have Thanksgiving number five on page 139. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Loving God, we thank you for this world of wonder and delight. You have given it to us to care for so that all your creatures may enjoy its bounty. Lord, your God, Lord our God, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you that when we turned away from you, you sent Jesus to live and work as one of us and bring us back to you. He showed us how to love you and set us free to love and serve one another. Lord, our God, we give you thanks and praise. We thank you that on the cross, Jesus took away our sin, all that keeps us from each other and from you. He frees us from hate and fear, from all that destroys love and trust. Lord our God, we give you thanks and praise. And so with everyone who believes in you, with all the saints and angels, we rejoice and praise you, saying, Holy, 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 Holy Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> and now we thank you for these gifts of bread and wine. May we who receive them, as Jesus said, share his body and his blood. On the night he was betrayed, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his friends and said, Take, eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He shared the cup with them and said, This is my blood poured out so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in remembrance of me. Christ, Christ has died, Christ, Christ is risen, risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. You have gathered us together to feed on Christ and to remember all he has done for us. Fill us with your spirit that we may follow Jesus in all we do and say, working for justice and bringing your peace to this world that you have made. Accept our prayers through Jesus Christ our Lord. Blessing Amen. and honour and glory and power are yours forever and ever. Amen. As this broken bread was once many grains, which have been gathered together and made one bread, so, so may your, your church be gathered from the ends of the earth into your kingdom. kingdom. 
Come, let us take this holy sacrament of the body and blood of Christ in remembrance that he died for us and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Body of Christ, the bread of heaven, keep me in eternal life. Blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, keep me in eternal life. Body of Christ, the head of the bread of heaven, keep me in eternal life. The body, the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation, keep me in eternal life. Prayer B on page 143. Bountiful God, at this table you graciously feed us with the bread of life and the cup of eternal salvation. May we who have reached out our hands to receive this sacrament be strengthened in your service. We who have sung your praises tell of your glory and truth in our lives. We who have seen the greatness of your love see you face to face in your kingdom and come to worship you with all your saints Saints. forever. Father, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice through Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out in the power of your spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. And the peace of God which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. So we just have a a few notices now. We have a service on on Zoom on Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. Uh, here, so uh, if you'd like to join us for that, uh, we continue, of course, the reflections in the morning and evening prayer also through the week. Um, we have a couple of birthdays as well. Well, Sue, Sue Lenkoff. Um, so, Sue, we're going yep. to sing Sue. Um, David Spalding, who's David Spalding? David Spalding. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway, David. David. There's a David who's got a birthday, so we'll mention him. I'm not sure who he is. But anyway, let's let's sing happy birthday. You can unmute everybody now, Chris, and we'll all sing happy birthday. Sure. We want to hear Ian too anyway, so yeah. So Sue then Cop Albert and Sue. Sue then Cop. Yeah. And David is um Gillian. Oh, oh Gillian Bacon? Gillian Bacon's son. Oh, yeah, oh David. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Sue and da- Sue and David. Great. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Sue and David. Happy birthday to you. Hooray! Hooray! Were there three hip hips? Yeah, there was. <laughs> there were. Okay, so um, also we've got morning tea, of course, at 10.30, if you'd like to join us for morning tea, anybody. So blessings, everybody, for the yep. day. Go Excuse me, can I just to make a quick hey, comment? Hey, oh, sorry. What was that? Can I just make a quick comment uh, to, I think just to Brian Forsyth and also the church. Yeah. Um, I found out late Friday afternoon, and I'm not sure of the date yet, but my understanding is that our community, Rotary Community Raffle, which is due to be drawn in the 6th of October or thereabouts, oh, yeah. because yeah. of the lockdown, we've actually got an extension of time, and I think it's some date in about April next year where it will be drawn. So oh, uh, right. for those that uh, have got raffle tickets, 
and who as Brian probably can't distribute them around the place um, because of the COVID uh, we have applied <coughs> to have a, an extension of time. Wow. I haven't been directly involved so I'm not sure of the exact date but I will get it and I'll pass it to Pat and she can put in a few leaflets. Okay, great. Yeah. Fantastic. Thank you. Right, any I other... have to wait that long to win. Yeah. <laughs> it'll, Sorry? it'll be worth I mean, it. it. Uh, if and we don't, didn't have this extension, I've got raffle tickets that I need to collect, and there's no way known I can go out and get them. So no, uh, no. it would have been a very bad result. It might have been the winner, might have been nice, but uh, <laughs> as a result of how much the church got back or the organisations got back, uh, would potentially be very low. So, no. Oh, right. I have an extension, something's got a chance to uh, get more money back for uh, the church and for the participants. So, yeah. Um, I'll let you know the dates, but unfortunately, it's this COVID caused lots of Thanks. problems. With Thanks, Jeff. Great. Fantastic. Sorry, can, I just, David, can I just mention something? Can we pray for that man that flopped? Because I had to go out yesterday afternoon and I went down past the Town Police Station. And there's, there was just cars and trucks everywhere. Um, he, I think he has dementia, uh, from what I understand. But he was he's uh, been lost since last Wednesday. So we're just praying that he's he's all right. Okay. Yeah, it's very sad. Yeah. Okay. So sure. So we continue to pray for the man who has been lost uh, near Caron Bounds. Yeah. Um, possibly with dementia, he. He had, um, he was riding his bike. Yeah, he was riding his bike. He went missing and reserve. he's been missing since and, last And um, there was, Katrina was saying that there were so many police on um, horses and... Yeah, looking through that bush. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's a very sad. And yesterday they still hadn't found him. Yeah. So let's pray that they find him today. Yeah. Yeah, and also uh, your neighbour who broke a bone. Sorry? Your neighbour. Is it? Who broke oh, it? Oh, yes. Yeah, you broke um, it. Sylvia was climbing down off the step after doing something in a... Uh, yeah, what did I say? Oh, sorry. Sorry, Sylvia. I didn't mean to say that. You know, Colleen was stepping down off... Um, <laughs> oh, I'm just not... Uh, That's all right. That. And anyway, she stepped down. She went to the doctor and she actually went to my doctor. And, um, and she said, no, there's nothing broken. Anyway, she got two breaks in her leg, wow. and they, they don't put plaster on these days. They put a moon boot, mm. oh, so right. she's very lucky. She can just go up the road and pick up a moon boot. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Wow. Pray for her, Colleen, oh, who broke her Colleen. leg in two places. Colleen. Yeah. Two okay. places. Okay. Well, see you at morning tea, eh? Yeah. Go in peace okay. to go go and on. serve the Lord. In the name, the name of Christ. Christ. Amen. 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 Okay. See you, everyone. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.